Hello friends, this is Kik, and in today's episode you can expect Humane, which has introduced a revolutionary smartphone replacement, the AI Pin. OpenAI having launched a partner program aimed at collecting unique data from third-party organizations for AI training. The US Marines, who have armed a GOAT robot with an anti-tank grenade launcher. Hyundai's eVTOL, which will start flying in the US as early as 2024. Flight tests of the largest modern aircraft and Virgin Galactic, which will cut costs and staff for the sake of Delta spaceships. All this and much more, right now. Let's go! Today's episode starts with the company Humane, founded by former Apple designer Imran Chaudhry. The company has released its first product, a displayless smartphone named iPin. It features a small laser projector that casts an image onto the user's palm. Additionally, it incorporates GPT-4 functions and offers intuitive control methods. The device attaches to clothing and performs almost all the functions of a traditional smartphone with a voice assistant. It can make calls, set reminders, and answer questions. The gadget is controlled either through a touch panel or a projection display that shows an image on the owner's hand. The new product recognizes the rotation and turning of the palm, as well as a gesture of pinching the index and thumb together. The voice assistant, powered by the GPT-4 language model, boasts a wide range of knowledge. It can describe the composition of any product, select a song based on a given theme, write a text message in its own words according to a specific scenario, and send it to a contact from the phone book. The built-in camera allows the smartphone to take pictures via voice command or a double tap on the touch panel. Additionally, AI can use the camera to see the object inquired about. All user queries, photos, notes, reminders, and other data are stored in the cloud and accessible through a web interface. AI PIN connects to the internet through a virtual network operator in collaboration with T-Mobile with a service tariff of $24 per month. The device itself will be available in the US market on November 16th for 690 nights. The package includes two batteries, a charging panel, a charging case, a cable, and a power adapter. The company believes this will be a revolutionary replacement for smartphones. What do you think? Can this gadget replace your smartphones in the future? We await your comments. And here, OpenAI has announced the launch of a new partner program, OpenAI Data Partnerships, aimed at acquiring unique datasets from third-party organizations to train its AI models. This initiative seeks to attract extensive databases, including those not publicly available. A distinctive feature of the program is its comprehensive nature. The data need not be quantitative or in text format. The program is also open to images, audio, and video. The collected data can cover any subject and be presented in any language, with the main requirement being that it reflects human intent, resembling long comp positions or meticulously transcribed dialogues. This will enable OpenAI to significantly improve tools such as automatic speech recognition technology and expand the functionality of ChatGPT, including support for voice queries, making user interaction more natural. Testing the model within OpenAI data partnerships will, in the future, expand the capabilities of the flagship neural network GPT-4 Turbo, which was recently updated to provide more meaningful responses to users. The company reports that it has already begun working with interested organizations including the government of Iceland. With specially selected datasets, OpenAI aims to improve GPT-4's ability to understand user requests in Icelandic. The implementation of this program will draw public attention to privacy issues, considering the growing audience of ChatGPT, which has about 100 million active users weekly. Let's move on. As robots increasingly integrate into the armed forces of various countries, interest grows in small agile support units capable of performing various tasks on the battlefield, including combat against armored vehicles. The US Marine Corps specialists decided to test whether a quadrupedal robot could be trusted with a grenade launcher. They don't mention which specific robot model was used as a test subject, but visually it closely resembles the products of the Chinese startup Unitry, priced around $5,000. According to military representatives, this robot is not suitable suitable for real combat as it is too lightweight, fragile, and its battery charge is insufficient for real military operations. However, it is suitable for demonstrating the viability of the technology. The RoboDog, which the American military calls a robot goat, was armed with a disposable anti-tank grenade launcher M72, a light and easy-to-handle weapon that has been in service with the US Army since the 1960s. It's not suitable for destroying modern tanks, but it can hit less heavily armored transport and other targets. All the actions necessary for firing, which would normally be done by a soldier can be performed by this remotely controlled machine. The operator can hide nearby in a safe place and guide the robot goat closer to the target. Whether the robot goat with a grenade launcher will be adopted for military use will be determined by further testing. But the fact that military thought is circling around the idea of arming quadrupedal robots is now evident. 
Hyundai, the world's third largest automaker by sales volume, plans to build a factory in the US, where its urban air mobility division, Supernal, will manufacture electric flying taxis. The South Korean giant has already invested about $1 billion in the project. By the end of 2024, the parent company Hyundai Motor Group aims to begin test flights in the US with prototypes of its eVTOL and by 2028, not only enter the market of commercial transportation using electric aircraft, but also start their production in the US. The exact location and construction cost of the Supernal facility remain unknown. The company plans to apply to the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration in the coming months for permission to conduct test flights. Supernal's head Jai Wan Shin noted that the operation of aircraft at altitudes up to 500 meters is not yet regulated, and creating the necessary legal and technical infrastructure will take a lot of time. There is also a need to develop lighter alternatives to traction batteries, which currently make up to 40% of the takeoff mass of electric aircraft. In light of this, Supernal is allocating about four years to transition from test flights to commercial operation, aiming to launch the final phase by 2028. The prototypes developed by Supernal will fly at speeds of 190 km ZH and accommodate one pilot and four passengers. It's likely that cargo transportation using electric aircraft will become widespread before passenger transport, as there will initially be skepticism towards this new type of air transport. Flying taxis are expected to start developing in major cities and, over time, gain passenger trust. These days, the electric airship Pathfinder 1 took to the skies for the first time, which its manufacturer, LTA Research, hopes will mark the beginning of a new era in eco-friendly aviation transport. Google co-founder Sergey Brin played a significant role in funding this project. At a length of 124.5 meters, Pathfinder 1 has become the largest aircraft since the giant and infamous airship Hindenburg of the 1930s. Unlike the Hindenburg, it uses inert helium for lift instead of highly flammable hydrogen. Pathfinder 1 was built entirely from scratch using new materials and technologies from modern unmanned aircraft, such as remote control, electric motors, and LIDARs. The helium filling the envelope is contained in 13 giant nylon compartments and is controlled using lasers. The rigid protective frame, covered with lightweight synthetic material TEDLAR, consists of 10,000 polymer tubes reinforced with carbon fiber, connected by 3,000 titanium sleeves. 12 electric motors powered by diesel generators and batteries provide vertical takeoff and landing. The new electric airship's estimated maximum speed is 120 km SIH, but initial test flights will be conducted at much lower speeds. Ahead lies a series of increasingly ambitious flight tests before Pathfinder 1 moves to Akron, Ohio, where LTA plans to build an even larger airship, Pathfinder 3. Ultimately, the company aims to create a family of airships for assistance in natural disasters, road assistance, and passenger transport with zero carbon emissions. Pathfinder 1 can carry about four tons of cargo in addition to the crew, water ballast, and fuel, but future humanitarian airships will require much greater carrying capacity. Likely, they will use zero-emission technologies such as hydrogen fuel cells for power generation. It will take a great deal of effort and meticulous work to prove that the new generation of super-large airships meets the safety and reliability standards of modern commercial aircraft. And what's kick without space? Virgin Galactic plans to reduce expenses and conduct staff layoffs in order to focus finances on the launch of production of new generation suborbital space planes. The uncertain state of the capital markets and geopolitical issues have made short-term access to capital less favorable. This complicates an already challenging situation for the company, which operates the suborbital ship VSS Unity and the carrier aircraft EVE from which the ship is launched. Virgin Galactic also faces the task of introducing the new generation Delta-class ships into service. The Delta-class ships are already a powerful economic driving force. To bring them into operation, the company needs to strengthen its financial position and reduce dependence on unpredictable capital markets. As the company stated, they can achieve this, but it will require redirecting resources to the Delta ships while simultaneously optimizing and reducing operations outside of the Delta program. As of the beginning of the year, the company employed about 1,100 people. Recently, Virgin Galactic conducted the fifth flight of the VSS Unity space plane, and by 2026, it plans to introduce the Delta-class spacecraft into service, which will require significant expenditures. However, the Delta-class will help the company become profitable. It will be able to launch these ships up to 400 times a year thanks to a standardized production model, which will reduce the cost of their production and maintenance. This year, Virgin Galactic closed the second quarter with revenue of $1.9 million, a net loss of $134.4 million, and total assets of $980 million. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to not miss a fresh portion of handpicked news. Goodbye.